Team Tactile. So we created a real-time text-to-braille converter. So what our device does is we can scan printed text and then a mechanism will display the text into its braille version. That this project was a good combination of hardware and software because our team is very mixed. We have really good team dynamics, and we all have the technical skills to make this come true. We're just a group of friends who wanted to do something cool. We definitely want to show our enthusiasm, and we're very passionate about this project. And I hope it comes through through the presentation. The project is basically a video game that aims to treat and diagnose lazy eye for kids. Flix is just a matter to replace the old medication and all the medicine process by a new one. So we'll be putting an X on the old medication method. That's where HealthX came from. We have here Daniel Blair. He's the lead artist in our game. We have our business guy here, Ahmed Nasri, and myself, Ahmad, I'm the team leader, and I'm just a developer who tried to keep up with these awesome guys. I'm originally from Jordan. Syria. I'm from Salt Lake, and that's actually where we all go to school now. It, it took a little while to realize that we had to pivot, as he's saying, from going from treatment to diagnostics and screening, and that seems to be really the underserved part of the market where we are kind of orienting ourselves towards. Just finding that we could help in a, to prevent years and years of uh, problems with this has been, it's been pretty neat to find out. It's just there's a lot of stories, like even, even when we talk to people here, they're like, oh, I have that, or my brother has that. We just get just keep hearing it. It's way more common than you'd think. The name of our company is Gunlock. When you hear Gunlock, you think of locking, and you think of location. And it's funny because we do neither of those things, but, but both of these words have a connotation towards security, and that's really sort of what we touch on. We develop a product that helps uh, gun owners maintain security over their firearm. Was more or less discussed on a, uh, an 18-hour bus ride to a hackathon at the University of Illinois. Uh, and so the four of us got together and decided, you know what, uh, let's, let's see what we can do. We had 36 hours to make a viable prototype. We made it. We won the best Microsoft hack because we used Azure to power our server. We're still using Azure. We were invited to attend the Imagine Cup and we're super excited that to be given that opportunity. We changed a few details in our project, wrote up a written proposal, and here we are in San Francisco. Francisco. We are Team Dora. We built a facial recognition entertainment system. Everyone has that personal assistant that's voice um, commanded, but we introduce sort of a visual experience. So we started with Door, um, but then um, to pay homage to um, concepts like Cortana and Siri, we changed to Dora. A voice commands integrated into our system, so um, Dora is really fun to use because we can be like, hey Dora, and then tell the system to do something. I think this is all of our first developer conference, so I think for all of us it's a great environment to be in. Um, we're CS majors and just being able to interact with industry representatives um, who we'll be working with in the future and seeing all the cool exciting things that are going on, especially here in San Francisco in the heart of Silicon Valley, um, it's just an amazing experience. My name is Janal DeLuca. Uh, my team name is Team IoT Education. The name behind that was the application is all about education and interfacing with robotics and IoT devices. The project's name is Vipal. It's a drag and drop visual programming language designed to help with intro to programming classes to help make it easier to learn your first programming language and learn algorithms and so on. About 59% of computer science students don't finish with a computer science degree and a lot of that is due to difficulty of intro level classes especially because they use text-based languages which have a variety of syntactic complexities like semicolons, braces, method names and so on. It's based on Microsoft's VPL so we innovated on their initial solution first off to provide greater support to make it more useful in the classroom, more accessible. Imagine Cup is a great opportunity for me to further extend Vipal, get some great feedback on it and just try to make it a more refined product that we can use to a greater extent at ASU and other colleges. Our project is helping um, biologists and land managers restore ecosystems, replacing, finding replacements for a lost plants. Like for example, there's a ohio tree that's dying out in Hawaii and we're, they're rapidly trying to find a plant that would replace it that wouldn't cause issues, a current ecosystem there. And that's one way we can use our program. We are Team RecycleBot. We're all currently students at UC Berkeley. We actually made the first RecycleBot at the Alhax 2.0, and uh, we ended up meeting Shayna and a couple of the other Microsoft uh, 
people who are there at the hackathon and they said, wow, this is a really cool idea. You guys should do this for Imagine Cup. And so we scaled up, we made a bigger robot, and uh, now we're here. Really over a quarter of the space in U.S. landfills is taken up by materials that are actually recyclable. And less than half of Americans actually recycle every day. So we thought, why not build a bot that does it for you? And that's kind of how it was all born. It's got cool lights on it now, too. We're I really think uh, they want us to change the world for the better, right? World citizenship? Yeah, we're saving the world. Yes. One, One recyclable at a time. <laughs> Um, so we're Local Pulse. Uh, we're a crowdsourced community improvement application that's both uh, citizen facing and government facing. Um, so what we're trying to do is make the problem reporting process for civic issues like potholes or street intersections or broken traffic signals and all of those uh, to make it frictionless for citizens to report. Um, we're just writing problems and some cool features on a table, uh, just tying them together to see what happened and eventually we just brought together crowdsourcing and civic issues. So. And so we found this really neat connection between civic engagement and technology that really hadn't been extensively done or well done before. So we wanted to change that. We're at high school and we're all like uh, kind of, we've gotten really interested in the civic involvement process through uh, making this application. Uh, I think more so than I would have ever expected. Um, so really understanding this process um, has helped us understand really the implications of our impact, and so that's what we're hoping to convey to the judges. Okay, so we're team near field pathology or NFP, yeah, which is tracking uh, medical samples. Last year, my wife uh, gave birth, had my first son, who was misdiagnosed uh, with group strep B. And my son, he had, he had medical problems. He was in the NICU for two weeks after he was born. What we're trying to do is decrease the amount of errors that come with reading lab samples that are taken um, so we can avoid stuff like that. So people don't have to unnecessarily go through treatment or so that they can get the treatment they need. It's a, it's a, great, a great place to be. Um, it gives us the opportunity to work with people who do this for a living, uh, getting help with our with our pitch, with our, our ideas, um, and to, to see new, new technology and, and to see what else is out there. It's like everyone has great projects. My name is Jed, and this is Eric, and this is Shabazz. Uh, we are Team Best, or uh, Bolo VR, in the competition. We've built a police training simulator called Best. Uh, Best stands for Behavior, Ethics, Strategy, Tactics. Police training simulator that's totally focused on de-escalation of conflict. In 2015, there were about 1,200 civilians in America who were shot by police. And there were also 127 police officers who were killed in the line of duty. Really, there's there's no excuse for that. So we're, we're building a a trainer that helps police to manage a situation before it becomes a choice between the life of the officer and the life of a civilian. And Eric has a brother-in-law who was actually killed in a, a police chase, and so this definitely has affected his family. We are thrilled to be part of the Imagine Cup, and we were excited to be in the semifinals, and now to be in the finals is just amazing, and for not only for the te technology that made this possible, but, but for the chance to be here and learn from some of the amazing people that are part of their organization. We are Earl Grey Games, or at least three quarters of it, created a game called Replay. Uh, and Replay is about murderous clones that are uh, following your movements. What we learned in the process of, of making this game is that it's really interesting uh, to create gameplay loops. So in most, in most games, like your obstacles are ahead of you. We, we force the player to have to return to the same room, so they have to remember what they did in that room to avoid the clones who are doing the same thing that they did in that room. We're all naturally nervous people, so <laughs> I think uh, if we get through uh, 10 minutes of what will be um, really stressful for, for us on stage, then uh, we'll, be, we'll be doing all right. <laughs> yeah. I'm John Miller. Um, I'm working on a turn-based strategy game. Uh, it's called Gibraltar, and it's focused on capturing and controlling territory. And you use that territory as a resource to move your pieces around the board. So the more territory you control, then the more pieces you can move around the board. And the more pieces you can move around the board, then the more territory you control. It's a different take on strategy games. It's something that uh, you don't see often, is focus on space rather than uh, focus on like buildings and units and things. Um, so I think it's a unique idea and I think it can do well. It, it is the game that I wanted to play. I would sit in class in high school and really want something to do with my mind that wasn't like paying attention to class. Um, and 
Not that I recommend that, but Gibraltar sort of sprung from that desire in myself. The thing I'm most excited about at Imagine Cup is um, getting to connect with other teams, as well as all the professionals here, and get feedback on Gibraltar as a product and as a business. We're all juniors in college. Uh, we attend the University of Southern California in their computer science games program. We were trying to come up with a team name that nobody hated, actually. Pretty nice, so. Yeah, so yeah. everyone was okay with it, so it ended up being the name. Yeah, it's a game really focused on mind games. The same screen, local multiplayer, stealth shooter. You're completely invisible in the dark. You might ask, how do you know where you are? Well, pretty much judging by like your own inputs, then you can kind of figure out where you would be. And also when you walk into walls, your controller rumbles, which lets you feel your way around. We've just been continuing to work on it over the school year, polishing it up, getting ready for this competition and um, showing it. We showed it South by Southwest recently also. So yeah, we've just been trying to add features in and, and get it ready for market. We are Team Spite. I am Anson Lee. And I'm Oliver Schull. And we are Team Spite because, well, we're in the EAE program at the University of Utah, which we might add is re was recently ranked number one in the nation for EAE. And uh, we're all seniors, so we're in senior project for the EAE program where we have to publish a game in order to graduate. We took everything that we enjoyed in a game and we put that into a platformer game, which we all play as well. So we wanted to make our own game. We had some great ideas that we wanted to see implemented, so we made a new game in spite of the games that we were working on in Senior Project. This is an opportunity for all of us to really bind our team together to continue even after we all graduate, and hopefully we'll stick together. Uh, we are Team Nova, we're from USC. There are lots of independent music musicians that are selling their own stuff. And I'm not familiar with independent music at that time, and there was a guy that he introduced me his music and I feel like, oh, the music is great, but how come I never heard about it? And if I like this kind of music, where it is, where can I find the next song? I mean, where, so it's kind of like a bridge between the music and the prayer so that the prayer won't get lost when they're trying to find their, their favorite music. The game itself has like very solid mechanic and it's I mean it's an interesting game but like the game also helps people to find their music yeah I'm I'm a little bit nervous yeah um, but but uh we'll make it yeah 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 excited and nervous <laughs> I think that we've developed a pretty good idea of what the judges are looking for. I'm pretty confident we'll be able to uh, deliver that. I'm really excited. These guys keep telling me to tone it down because I keep, I keep getting too excited. I, I'm just like going up to everyone saying, hi, I'm Anthony, what's your name? And so I'm trying to tone it down actually. So. But I'm excited, I'm really excited. Just from the small pitches that we've heard, uh, we're already really inspired about the things that, that people are uh, producing. It's um, pretty amazing. Yep. It, it took a little while to realize that we had to pivot, as he's saying, from going from treatment to diagnostics and screening. And that seems to be really the underserved part of the market where we are kind of orienting ourselves towards. Just finding that we could help in a, to prevent years and years of uh, problems with this has been, it's been pretty neat to find out. It's just, there's a lot of stories. Like even, even when we talk to people here, they're like, oh, I have that, or my brother has that. We just get just keep hearing it. It's way more common than you think. Team Tactile. So we created a real-time text-to-braille converter. So what our device does is we can scan printed text and then a mechanism will display the text into its braille version. 
that this project was a good combination of hardware and software because our team is very mixed. It's really good team dynamics and we all have the technical skills to make this come true. We were just a group of friends who wanted to do something cool. Definitely want to show our enthusiasm and we are very passionate about this project and I hope it comes through through the presentation. The project is basically a video game that aims to treat and diagnose lazy eye for kids. Flix is just a matter to replace the old medication and all the medicine process by a new one. So we put in an X on the old medication method. That's where HealthX came from. We have here Daniel Blair. He's the lead artist in our game. We have our business guy here, Ahmed Nasri, and myself, Ahmad. I'm the team leader and I'm just a developer who tried to keep up with these awesome guys. I'm originally from Jordan. Syria. I'm from Salt Lake, and that's actually where we all go to school now. The name of our company is Gunlock. When you hear Gunlock, you think of walking, and you think of location. And it's funny because we do neither of those things, but, but both of these words have a connotation towards security, and that's really sort of what we touch on. We develop a product that helps uh, gun owners maintain security over their firearms. Was more or less discussed on a, uh, an 18 hour bus ride to a hackathon at the University of Illinois. Uh, and so the four of us got together and decided, you know what, uh, let's, let's see what we can do. We have 36 hours to make a viable